Hello everyone, Adam Thompson at Focal Point here, coming to you as always from Focal Point headquarters in lovely Plymouth, Minnesota. Hope you are all having a fantastic day. We are continuing this Eat That Frog personal success video series. This is number five. We're going to be looking at our critical constraints, uh, analyzing those things that are holding us back, that are keeping us from reaching our full potential that are keeping us from achieving our goals either in completion or at the speed at which we would prefer to achieve them. We're going to walk that through that idea over the next few minutes. Before we do, as always, a little bit about me. I am a certified business coach at Focal Point of Minnesota. What that means is I work with my clients on overcoming those constraints, overcoming those obstacles that are standing in their way, generally related to their team, their time, their money, clarity of purpose, perhaps an exit strategy. I provide my clients with the tools they need, the disciplines they need, need, and the accountability and that measurability that they might need to accomplish their goals faster than they could ever do on their own. So when we talk about critical constraints, we are really looking at those limiting factors in your life, in your career, in your business, in your path to success. For every goal that we set, for every business out there, every system, every process, there's some type of limiting factor or constraint in this case that is determining how fast that job can get done. Now, one of the keys to being effective, to getting things done, to accomplishing goals is the ability to eliminate and identify that limiting factor, that, that choke point, that bottleneck that is really determining the speed at which we can all succeed, the speed at which we can complete a task or get things done. Now, you can make more progress toward your goals by removing or eliminating these key constraints than you can do in doing anything else, any other single task or activity. Getting rid of, clearing the way of the thing that is holding you back the most can greatly impact your ability to get things done and to achieve your goals. So what does the process look like? What does it mean to work on, to eliminate, to identify those key constraints? Well, it, it really comes down to three steps. The first step is you need to identify your goal. You need to be very clear about this. You need to determine with absolute clarity what it is you're trying to get done, what it is you're trying to accomplish. We can't work to identify the roadblocks in front of us if we don't know what road we're trying to take in the first place. Next, you need to identify that one factor that is setting the speed at which you achieve your goal. A, a critical constraint is, if you look at it in, in, in the sense of that, that weakest link analogy, the idea that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. In terms of critical constraints, your biggest constraint is what sets the speed at which you can achieve everything else. If you are excellent and fast at 99 out of 100 things, no matter how fast you are at the first 99, the one thing that you are least adept at, the thing that slows you down the most, that's what's going to set the pace at which you can achieve and accomplish things. You can only move as quickly as your biggest constraint allows you to. So it's very key to find that limiting factor, that thing that is slowing you down the most, so you know what it looks like. And then finally, you need to focus all of your time and energy on alleviating that single constraint, on getting it out of the way. You know where you're trying to go, you've identified the roadblock in the way, now the first thing you need to do is do everything you can to get that roadblock out of the way. Sometimes that constraint, sometimes that roadblock may be nothing more than our own complexity, than the complexity and, and how complicated our process is, our systems are, uh, how many people it takes to get something done, etc. The more steps you have in a process, the more complicated things become, the more complex things become. Brian Tracy calls it his law of complexity. It is literally a formula that he, that he came up with, and it looks at the number of possible mistakes in a process. And in the law of complexity, the number of possible com mistakes equals the square of the number of steps taken to complete 
that activity. Example, you need to make a phone call to someone and pass on a message. There's one step in the process. You make a phone call. Uh, the, square, the square of 1, 1 times 1, equals 1. That means making a phone call to leave a message is a complexity level of 1. There are very few mistakes that can occur and very little time could be lost because of those mistakes and, and because of that process. Now say you decide to ask someone else to call someone and leave a message. Well, now there's two steps in that process. So now our law of complexity is 2 squared, 2 times 2, equals the complexity level of 4. There are now four possible mistakes that can be made in this process. Not making the call, or making the call, passing the message on accurately, or passing the message on inaccurately. 2 times 2 equals 4. We've, it's now, just by adding one step, become four times as complicated. Let's say now that the person you ask now asks a third person to make the call. We now have three steps in the process. Three times three is nine. A complexity level of nine involving three people in the process has now made, and adding, th adding three steps, has now made this nine times as complicated as it was when you were just going to make that phone call initially. So oftentimes, just being able to simplify process, simplify systems, remove steps to accomplish something can significantly lower the level of complexity and therefore eliminate a key constraint right there. If your constraint is process, it's time to look at the process. It's time to determine how it can be simplified and scaled back and made less complex. Your ability to identify and define your critical constraint and find a way to alleviate it will be the critical factor in determining your success and the speed at which you reach success. As I said, we can only move as quickly as that critical constraint allows us to. It is the thing that slows us down the most. It is the thing that sets the speed at which we can accomplish our goals. The better we get, the better we can be at identifying and removing those constraints, the more efficient we will be and the faster we can work to reach the goals and the objectives that we set for ourselves. As always, we go to key takeaways to cement these ideas in our brain. We are committing to action. We are taking this knowledge and applying it. We do that for two reasons. First of all, applying knowledge that we just learned in a real world setting helps to maximize our retention. It helps us to retain what we just learned. Second of all, taking action moves us toward a goal. So what was your key takeaway? Perhaps it is that you need to indeed identify that constraint that is holding you back from reaching a goal you've set for yourself. Perhaps you already know what that constraint is and you simply need to work on how to eliminate it. Regardless of what it is, I encourage you to take action, to take this information and apply it to your life, to your business, to your work, to your profession, and see what it does for you in order to accomplish your goals and get you to where you want to be. So let me know what you think, guys. As always, I want your feedback. I'm looking forward to the thumbs up, to the smiley faces, to the hearts, to the comments below. I, I'm always working to get better at this. This is my livelihood, my vocation, my passion. I love working with business owners and clients on, on how to apply these things. And I want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. So I welcome your feedback. I welcome your thoughts on if I'm on the right path here, if this is relevant, if this is interesting to you. Perhaps I touched a nerve. Perhaps I hit something that resonated with you. And if so, I want to hear from you about it. I want to hear what you think of these ideas and what you think of, of this process in general. As I've mentioned before, all these videos are part of a, of a longer workshop where we can engage in a group setting where we can brainstorm, we can write down ideas, where we can put down actions, where we can get things down on paper and come up with our own strategic plans. I'd love to set one of those up. If you're interested, please let me know. Or if you just want to talk about your life, your business, your profession, and where you're trying to go, if you want to get my thoughts, if you want to chat more about these ideas, I want to hear from you. Message me. Comment below, send me an email, send me a text, give me a good old-fashioned phone call, tweet me, Facebook me. You know how to reach me. I look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to the conversation. Have a great day, 
and thanks again for listening.